Hello and welcome back to Football Scrutiny. Today we're going to be looking at the game between Red Bull Salzburg and Liverpool in the Champions League final group stage match. It was a high intensity match from both sides. Could easily have finished far more than 2-0 to Liverpool. Red Bull Salzburg will feel unlucky not to have gotten the score sheet during the game. Let's jump straight into the systems then. Red Bull Salzburg played with their typical 4-4-2 diamond system with Haaland and Hichan up front and Minamino at the head of that diamond. Liverpool's system, as you would expect, the typical 4-3-3 from them. Lovren able to make the starting lineup. Gator favoured over James Milner and that deadly front three from Liverpool, Sadio Mane, Firmino and Mohamed Salah out front from Liverpool. In the second half, they switched to a 4-2-3-1 as they were unable to make the breakthrough. Switching to the system helped them make the breakthrough with the first and second goal. Let's take a look at some of the main tactical concepts from the match. Starting off with that midfield diamond from Red Bull Salzburg, creating superiority inside in the middle of the pitch, causing Liverpool problems in defence, but also leading to problems for Red Bull Salzburg in defence. Okay, so here we can see the teams lined up in how would we expect. The two centre forwards, as I mentioned in the preview, we try and find these spaces in between the centre back and full back, trying to force them back and prevent the two centre backs from jumping out. There would then be a four against three situation in the middle of the pitch, with Henderson, Finn Aldrum, and Keita outnumbered. And often we would see this situation with Minamino coming behind the back of Jordan Henderson, forcing Lovren and Van Dijk to stay in the middle of the pitch and causing also the fullbacks from Liverpool. This would prevent them from jumping out with the fullbacks moved up from Red Bull Salzburg. With the two wide midfielders coming inside, Keita and Vinaldrum, they would be forced inside as well and it would be difficult for them to jump out onto the fullbacks, the advancing fullbacks from Red Bull Salzburg. This was key into some of the early opportunities from Red Bull Salzburg with that superiority in the middle of the pitch causing everything to be really compact. Here Red Bull Salzburg are about to make a, a long pass into the forwards. And I'm just highlighting here the back four from Liverpool with the two centre forwards from Red Bull Salzburg trying to make those runs in between centre back and full back. Minamino also trying to make that run in behind, forcing Liverpool defence back. And I'm just highlighting here Jordan Henderson and the two wide players from Red Bull Salzburg creating superiority in the middle of the pitch and making it difficult for Liverpool to win that second ball off a long pass. Jordan Henderson was outnumbered in that second ball. Red Bull Salzburg recuperate the ball in that area and created an opportunity on goal. That's one of the difficulties for Liverpool faced for defending against that 4-4-2 diamond from Red Bull Salzburg. Here we can just see a pass from centre-back to centre-back, Lovren into Van Dijk and you can see the body position from He Chan getting ready to jump out and press. When the ball comes into Van Dijk, he realises that he's going to have to make a pass back into the goalkeeper. He can't really open his body out to play wide, forcing it back. That other pass into Lovren now has been covered by Haaland and Liverpool goalkeeper has to play it long. And this is where we're going to see one of the problems with the 4-4-2 diamond for Liverpool with the inferiority of numbers in the middle of the pitch. So when that ball comes in, we can see the four midfielders from Red Bull Salzburg and the three midfielders from Liverpool making it difficult for them to win that ball and highlighting again why Liverpool needed to try and play wide and it also highlights the reason why He Chan tried to prevent Van Dijk from playing it wide by forcing him with that pressurising run. For me this image shows how the game went completely. Here the back four from Liverpool with the two centre forwards from Salzburg in between centre back and full back. Then inside the middle of the pitch we've got the four midfielders highlighted in black for Salzburg and the three from Liverpool highlighted also. The wide players of the diamond so far inside that Keita and Vinaldrum are really close inside as well and that lifts the space over on the opposite side for this pass into the opposite side left back creating difficulties for Liverpool in defence. And that is the benefit of the 4-4-2 diamonds being able to get the full back high and causing difficulties for the three midfielders with the inferiority 
of numbers which they've got in the middle of the pitch. The first goal from Liverpool came from switching the play, like we mentioned in the preview. When the team was on one side of the pitch, we can see there the midfield diamond from Salzburg really shifted across onto one side, leaving plenty of space on the opposite side of the pitch for Liverpool to make these long switching passes which they love between the two fullbacks and create danger on the opposite side of the pitch, leading to the first goal. As we mentioned in the preview, we said that Liverpool would be able to switch the ball across from the left and to the right when Red Bull Salzburg were over to one side. Here I've highlighted the four in midfield, the diamond from Red Bull Salzburg and how tightly compact they are onto one side. All the space on the opposite side of the pitch for a potential two against one situation. And when that ball is laid back off to Robertson, you can see his body position here playing a long switch out onto the opposite side of the pitch. And by the time he receives it, if the ball had been a little bit further forward, it would have been a two against one situation with Salah, Trent Arnold and the Red Bull Salzburg left back. This is one of the examples from the game where the midfield diamond from Red Bull Salzburg in the early minutes was switched onto one side. Liverpool had the intelligence to try and switch the play. When the ball came back to the goalkeeper, long crossfield pass onto the other side of the pitch. And when the ball arrived there, the midfield diamond, as you can see, couldn't shift all the way across. There's plenty of space in the middle. And that's where Liverpool were able to find this pass into Van Aldrin. All he had to do then is lift his head up and switch the play onto the opposite side of the pitch. As you can see there, there's plenty of space on the opposite side of the pitch. Jordan Henson's even indicating for Van Aldrin to play that pass onto the opposite side. On this occasion, they didn't do it though. However, this was a situation that reoccurred during the whole game. This is the image that I was expecting to see during the game, as I highlighted in the preview. This crossfield pass from Trent Arnold, switching it onto the opposite side of the pitch, Robertson, able to get in behind the outside midfielder of that midfield diamond from Salzburg. When that ball comes into him, you can see that the Salzburg midfielder can't get to him, forcing the fullback, Christensen, out to meet him. And Sadio Mane was able to break through and receive that pass from Robertson and force his way into the penalty area. And when he got there, he sucked out the goalkeeper, played a chip pass into Keita. And that little chip pass led to the, the first goal. And really highlights the need to switch the play whilst playing against a team playing a 4-4-2 diamond. Finally, we're going to take a quick look at the front three. So dangerous, all three of them. Highland up front, Minamino leading the front of the diamond, and He Chan up front with Haaland. All three of them so dangerous during the game. Haaland and He Chan were trying to get in behind the the defence from Liverpool in between the centre back and full back. I mean, Amino would try and get in behind Henderson and cause all sorts of problems. Here we can see Minamino picking up a position in between the Liverpool defence and midfield. When the ball comes through, he just turns and he looks to play passes in behind into Haaland or into He Chan. It's also worth pointing out the positioning of Haaland, positioning himself on the shoulder of the defence, preventing Lovren from seeing the ball and him and creating opportunities to receive the ball behind the Liverpool defence. So here we can see now when Minamino picks that ball up, he's able to either play a ball into Haaland or into the space behind Fihi Chan. On this occasion, Van Dijk was just able to nip in front of him and prevent a goal from the first minute. Here Red Bull Salzburg start a counter-attack, long ball into Haaland and look at the space which he's got. When that ball comes through, I've just highlighted Haaland because he's making a run in between the two centre-backs, but we can also see He chan just underneath him. It's two against two at the back, and dangerous on the counter-attacks. On this occasion, though, Van Dijk was strong enough to get in front of Haaland and force him off the ball, but it was an early warning sign for Liverpool that two against two at the back can be dangerous. This is another early example of a counter-attack from Salzburg. Here they win the ball back. They quickly try to play the ball into their front two, as we can see there, two against two at the back, living dangerously from Liverpool in the early stages. This image just shows on the edge of the box how creative they can be in small spaces. Four Liverpool defenders, Minamino and He Chan, still able to play a one-two in between them and get a shot on goal. Here the back heel from Minamino into the path of He Chan. At this moment here, he cuts inside Jordan Henderson, and it's a good save originally from Allison, and he actually makes a double save on this occasion. So dangerous, these front three. In conclusion, 
The midfield diamond from Red Bull Salzburg caused Liverpool all sorts of problems. It wasn't until they switched the ball in the second half from fullback to fullback that they were able to create their first goal and really open the game up. And finally, the dangerous front three from Red Bull Salzburg. We can expect all three of them to be receiving big offers from, from clubs in the near future. Red Bull Salzburg are going to have difficulties keeping hold of them.